So now that we've established these tables, let's move into what it's going to look like if we're actually going to be implementing this. Let's jump into our TC plot window here. So again, we're going to be driving on the road. We've calibrated all of our speed sensors. We can see that 50 mile per hour at driven speed, 50 mile per hour ground speed. Our slip measured here is zero, and our target here is five. So we want no more than five mile per hour difference between our driven and undriven wheel. If we have anything higher than five, it's going to signify that we need to start taking action. First action is going to be, uh, as it calculates the TC uh, torque reduction, it's going to pull spark, and then as it moves up into the table, a 30, 40% torque reduction, it's going to start to cut uh, pull ignition timing and cut spark. So it's going to have a combination effect working together. So we always want to use that pull, spark, pull ignition timing, and then cut spark. So let's move back into our TC plot. And let's go ahead and induce some wheel spin and see what's going to happen here. And watching our TC measured, watching our ignition retard, and then watching this torque reduce request input. So let's go ahead and have some more wheel spin. So as we increase, we can see automatically we're overstepping our threshold here. Um, we can see that our, our slip measured, our mile per hour here is uh, going over and it's varying in the slip measure and our, T our torque reduction request here is bouncing around and we can see that our ignition timing is bouncing. Let's go ahead and just increase that a touch and we're going to find that um, we can see that we have a, a much higher amount here uh, for our uh, mile per hour. So our slip here is around 13 to 14 mile per hour difference. We can see that our ignition retard is uh, pulling out 9 degrees and our spark cut is just starting to kick in here at 3%. So it's going to be a very, very faint miss as we're starting to pull more ignition timing out to try to get this mile per hour uh, slip measure here back uh, to the target of five here. So let's go ahead, while we're doing this, let's go ahead and just hit our logging function so we can see what this is going to look like graphically as we're, as we're driving. So let's go ahead and we're going to move up in our engine RPM here and we're going to see what this is going to look like. So as I bring my uh, reduction down here and we see that our uh, wheels we're driving here and we're going to see that we bring our mile per hour up and we come down and bring it up again we can see it kick in and depending on how bad our wheel spin in it's going to have that reactive uh, difference here as we're driving so let's go ahead and look at this let's stop our data logging and play it back so we can take it take a look at what this is going to look like we're just going to say no we're going to save it we're just going to go back and review it so we can see when we, tr we trace back through a window here we can see that we have our engine speed we have our target we measure at five we have our slip measure here at 20. we can see that our ignition timing it's pulling up 14 degrees ignition timing and our spark cut was 16% cut. Because we can see that our torque reduce request here was calculating 44%. So when we drag it through the table here, we can see as we change the wheel speeds were changing, our slip measure was changing, and that was changing how the ECU was reacting um, as it was getting spin and then getting it back under control again. Um, so we're going to see that it moves around here a bunch, um, and we can see how it works. So as we, as we calculate higher uh, measured slip, um, we're going to see that we're going to have more reactive uh, or more reaction from the infinity to pull ignition timing and cut spark, again, based on what we set these tables up. So we can set these up however we 